General of the U.S. Army Europe. I'd like to thank you all for uh, attending today. We're very proud of what is occurring today with the uh, deployment of the 3rd Brigade Combat Team 4th Infantry Division, which as General Ray said, is a visible sign of the continued U.S. commitment to peace and security and prosperity on the continent of Europe. What is significant about this deployment is this brigade combat team is bringing all their equipment from the states. It is enabling us to build additional readiness within the United States Army and also readiness within our NATO allies. By bringing their equipment from home station, you're able to see the complexity of this operation. The ships on both sides of us were able to exercise the strategic lines of communication we're able to exercise all that it takes working with our allies to have freedom of movement and speed of assembly so we can move where needed to ensure we are ready to maintain the peace and deter any potential adversaries. At this time, I'd like to introduce Major General Dane, Dwayne Gamble from the 21st Theater Sustainment Command, which is truly the brains behind this complex logistical operation. Good afternoon, my name is Major General Dwayne Gamble. I'm the Commanding General of the 21st Theater Sustainment Command. We're headquartered in Kaiserslautern, Germany. It's our mission to receive, stage, and on or move this brigade from the port of Bremerhaven to Poland, where it will prepare to exercise and conduct operations with our NATO allies. We'll do this over a 10-day period. Currently, we're on the morning of day three. We'll do first, the deployment started at home station on three vessels, two of which you see here docked at the port. The first vessel has already been downloaded and has departed uh, this station. We'll move them forward from this uh, location via rail and convoy while the soldiers fly from home station direct into Poland and prepare to receive this equipment where the unit will then prepare to configure its equipment for training and exercises across Eastern Europe. We'll, the, we'll have a convoy as well uh, that will traverse Germany. That convoy will leave tomorrow. And, and those soldiers will operate their vehicles across Germany and into Poland to link up with their parent brigade. Uh, the last piece is we couldn't do this without our allies, our host nation Germany, that enables everything the U.S. Army does in Europe. It's a, Germany is our center of gravity in Europe, and our great ally, alliance and our great allies in Germany for the past 70 years have enabled everything we do here, to include the city of Bremen, who, who facilitate our operation with this Incredible capability at the Port of Bremerhaven. With that, I'd like to enjoy, introduce one of my allies, uh, Major General Zimmer, the commander of the German Logistics Command. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brigadier General Winfried Zimmer, Commandant of the German Armed Forces Logistics School. And with that school, we are belonging to the Joint Support Service. And with the Joint Support Service, we are happy to give support to our American allies for that uh, very important exercise and operation here in Germany towards Poland, so towards the east flank of the NATO. Uh, we are serving the Americans by providing movement control, military policemen, as well as logistical support. Also in my school in Garstedt, where we house right at the moment around about 400 American soldiers plus uh, 600 vehicles. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we'll open the floor to questions. Yes. Hello, hi, my name is Jan from Polakowski. I'm from Polish Public Television. I have questions for General Ray. Can you tell us how many rotations are already planned? Can you go to the microphone, please? So as we said earlier, that this is continued effort. So we have a great deal of effort going on all over Europe from the maritime special operations, land and air. Uh, this particular operation will be followed very closely by an aviation brigade that will be coming in. And we intend to keep these rotations, as we say, heel to toe, so one after another. We'll keep a, a steady presence here. The further details at hand get over to General Warren. Well, just to add upon what General Ray said, this is heel to toe, which means before this brigade redeploys, another armored brigade combat team from the United States will deploy with all their equipment. So once again, we're getting additional repetition in so we can learn. It's been uh, fantastic on already we're doing what we call after action reviews in which we're able with our uh, allies to talk through how 
how could we do this even quicker in the future? So I think that's significant that what the heel to toe aspect is before they depart, another unit will come and we're gonna make sure we are learning. And so every day we're conducting uh, hot washes so we can uh, determine once again, how do we do this even uh, quicker in the future? To reference your question on what the brigade will be doing, uh, initially they will be assembling in Poland. They will be uh, going through uh, in tactical assembly areas, activities to make sure they are, are uh, uh, ready to fight. And that means they're able to shoot, move, and communicate. They'll also go into a training, uh, some training exercises with the, uh, the Polish Armed Forces. And then the brigade will uh, move out to locations from Estonia down to Bulgaria and Romania. And then during the course of their nine month deployment, we'll bring once again, mass the brigade together so they can uh, practice once again, the speed of assembly and exercise in the criticality of freedom of movement. But throughout their nine months, one of the great things about deploying state you know, forces from the United States is they're gonna be able to work hand in hand with their our, our allies throughout NATO. So both from the Polish uh, armed forces, but also uh, here in Germany, throughout the Baltics and also the Black Sea. So we're very excited. So it's first, but not the last rotation. Uh, 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 you know, right now it is heel to toe.
does show the global uh, commitment of the uh, United States Army and the United States of America. And once again, uh, I'm very proud that we're a member of NATO and I'm proud of our commitment for 70 years to uh, peace and stability uh, here in Europe. But this unit has uh, recently uh, been focused on uh, the Middle East. They just got back from the National Training Center, which is in Fort Irwin, California. And uh, Fort Irwin, California, for any of you who have been there, I believe there is three tre trees in the entire uh, training area. So it's in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And so why tan? One, that's optimized for uh, training at the National Training Center. And we have not had time to, uh, to paint them. So uh, uh, it was a conscious decision because of their training path and the need to get them here uh, as scheduled in January, that uh, part of it is just uh, do not have time to, uh, to paint them green. I have time for one more question. Or not. Oh, just a quick John. one. Um, for uh, General Gamble, uh, this is a big logistical effort uh, that's going on. Can you talk a little bit about what you've learned so far in this early stage? Um, you know, lessons learned, hiccups along the way to speed it up next time. Yep, thanks. Thanks for your question. So, uh, in terms of what we've learned, it starts with our plan. Our plan was to take an end-to-end -end view and build the speed of response or the speed of assembly, as we call it, starting at home station. So, each of these vehicles, as you see them right here in the port, they're lined up by train, and we knew what train they were had they were going on, or what convoy they were going on when, when they left Beaumont, Texas. So, we've arranged them by by train load or convoy in order to facilitate Colonel Norrie's build of combat power in the assembly area. So we've set a very aggressive, very high bar for ourselves in terms of the speed. So what we've learned so far is the transition from ship to ground and then ground to rail. You know, there, there are some friction points in there. We've been able to work our way through those friction points. Uh, we've learned that the best practice is this end-to-end -end view, understanding how the force will be employed and have that extend all the way back to home station and how the ships are loaded. The stow plan, the stow plan reflects how we see, how we uh, envision employing the force, in this case into a training exercise. Um, and we've also learned that weather has an impact. The, uh, we, we had freezing rain and ice over the last 24 hours. We, we factored in time to react to that and so far our plan is, is going quite well. I think in terms of speed in the future, the second part of your question is to identify those best practices, uh, you know, codify them and use them for, for future deployments. I think one lesson learned uh, so far is that maybe the, the uh, departure of the first train, which by the way is halfway across Germany now headed to Poland, maybe we delay the loading of that first train by a couple hours because we found ourselves and we planned it this way that we're literally downloading the first ship and right onto the first train. So the precision in that uh, took a lot of planning. It's frankly it worked fairly well, uh, but I'm not sure that's sustainable for brigade after brigade after brigade. So we have to decide if we take a little bit deliberate approach on, in the, on the front end in the future to get to maintain momentum throughout the operation. There'll be 37 trains leaving here and Bergen-Honey over the next 10 days. Uh, two of them have departed Bremerhaven already. Uh, two more will depart tonight, and we'll have that same kind of rhythm over the course of the next 10 days. It's 24-hour operations. Soldiers are operating in pretty tough conditions, uh, but we've been able to work our way through that, and the soldiers are doing tremendous, keeping the mission as long as, as well as our civilian partners. You know, the rail uh, company that supports us, stevedores here that are supporting us everybody's been able to accomplish the mission despite some challenging weather effects despite 24 hour, hour operations and so you know i'm pretty proud